Lord, we thank you. Just, just praise him, actually, whatever, whatever situation that is bothering you now. Just thank him because God is working it out. Lord, we thank you. We praise you because you're always on the move. You're always working for us. You're always for us, not against us. We bless you, Father. We praise you. We magnify you. We magnify you over all the challenges, problems, mountains that we might be facing. But you are bigger, stronger, greater, mightier than any challenges, any problems, Father. We thank you. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We magnify. We exalt you, Father. We thank you for this opportunity to know that you're always with us. I have a scripture, actually. This, this song was not a mistake. This was a God-ordained moment. It goes along with the scripture God put in my heart from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13 says, Beloved, do not think it is strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. <laughs> wow. It's calling you beloved, you know. Like I said a few weeks ago, that's how God calls us. Beloved means the most love to one. But what he's saying is, do not think it's strange concerning the fiery trial. See, the beloved is going through the fiery trial. Can you believe that? We think it is not normal. It says, do not think it is strange. Fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. It's not strange. Don't think that something strange has happened to you. No. This is for those who are beloved of God. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. That when his glory is revealed you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Wow. See how God starts it. He calls us beloved. Then he says, you're going to go through fiery trials. <laughs> and you might think that is strange because how can you let your beloved go through fiery trial? What kind of God is that, right? But, but it is how it is going to happen is, but rejoice to the extent that you partake Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Father, we thank you for that exceeding joy, even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of fiery trials. We thank you. Thank you for bringing Uniki back on screen, Father, with a smiley face. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives, every one of our lives. We are so grateful. We are so privileged, Father, to be on this call, to be part of your kingdom, Ecclesia. And thank you for all that you're doing globally through different tribes, through different um, family members, Father, in the kingdom. We thank you for the citizenship, ambassadorship that you have given us we rejoice with you, Father. We are not looking at the fiery trial, but we are looking at you, the author and finisher of our faith. Thank you and welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Uniki, you want to add anything to else to what has already been said? <laughs> I know no, you I think shared with the word with me that was powerful. But I don't think maybe some other time you can share that. Or I don't okay. know if you planned it already with uh, with your husband. If you already planned it, I'm fine with it. But no pressure. No. I'll wait. I'll wait you for will. a moment. Okay, that's good. Jesse, good to see you. Anybody else have any testimonies, any praise reports, any updates about what God is doing, what is happening? Any dreams? Yes, this I have. Word. Yes. Yeah, this, yeah, this is Nancy. Who is this? This is Nancy and Uni. He just Nancy. had his register yes. on Menaglo. <laughs> yes, yes. Go ahead. Yes, I 
Yeah, it's from the last meeting. Sorry. Good morning, Ecclesia. I just want to bless the name of God for... Uh, I have a testimony to share what God did. The last time I, you know, it came to my mind, but I forgot when I, when I logged in. So uh, we prayed. Yeah, we prayed for my brother who was missing uh, in Cameroon. Uh, he was missing for four weeks. Nobody knew where he was, but he, he, he was found in good condition. Uh, and he's back home. So we just want to praise God. For that. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Thank you for praying. Yeah. How old was he? How old is he? Uh, he was 30. He was 30. Now with the instability back home, you don't know where somebody's missing. You don't know if he's been killed. Because people do a lot of horrible things now. They are killing people, kidnapping them, selling their body parts. So it was a tough time for the family. But God showed himself mighty. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Thank you, God. We are yes. coming to rejoicing with you and the rest of the family. Hi, Heather. Welcome, Delta. Welcome, everybody else who ever joined late. Uh, Daniela, Sachs, Minty, Andre, Laxon, Mary, Samuel, Robert, Paul. I got to see you after a while. Wins, my brother, Robert. Uh, James, Rohan, Walters, everyone welcome. Well, we have a special treat today. You know, like I mentioned last week, I wanted to hear from different tribes what God is doing through them, in them. And it's exciting. Some of the news, you know, I was reading about the land tribe today, the territory, the news that they've been sharing. It's amazing about the land ownership because this man was sharing man, land without man is nothing and man without land is nothing. <laughs> you cannot live without land. God created us. Remember that word, Adam, came from the Hebrew word Adama, means ground. Man of the ground. That's what God called us because we were created to manage, to take care of this planet Earth. And the religious spirit told us we were created to fly away somewhere. He called us, this ground belongs to you. You take care of it, you manage it, maximize it, establish my kingdom and his will. What a privilege, what an honor. Every day we get to live on this earth, it's an opportunity, people of God. Don't complain, please. <laughs> Don't complain, every breath. We get to take, it's a privilege. Every moment we get to live because anything can happen to anybody at any time, anywhere. So please don't take it for granted. The life that we live here, the opportunity we have, what I would encourage you, maximize it. Maximize it for God's kingdom. And I'm so grateful for what God is doing. You know, I just let it go. I want God to do it because I tried to make things happen. Nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> Holy mess that happened. So when I let it go, God began to do it. Things have happened in two years, what I couldn't do in 25 years. That's not an exaggeration. What God is doing or has done in two years is more than what I could have made it happen in 25 years of labor and effort and spitting and shouting and screaming, nothing. <laughs> so thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Because that's what Jesus said, come and find rest for your soul. Those who are laboring and heavy laden, come and find rest. And I know it's a process. It's a journey. And we all worry about things, you know, all that happens to us, but may the Lord help each one of us. So let's pray before I invite the business tribe, the kingdom business tribe. And today we are going to hear from Charbrit Alexander. He's a mighty man, dear friend of mine, my confidant, my brother, God's ambassador uh, from the Caribbean, Suriname, Dominica. I don't know which island you are. He's, he's in a different place every month. <laughs> So, so I don't know where you call it home, my brother. And Yuniki, we are so grateful. I'm so grateful to have you both. 
part of the ecclesia, part of the kingdom school, and what to, to see what God is doing, even in the midst of fiery trials, what God is doing. I'm so amazed. I'm so grateful. And I'm thanking God for you both. And what you're doing, what God has done is nothing compared to what he has in store. You know, this is only a launching pad. This is only a beginning. You are still on the runway. You know, begin taking momentum, beginning that momentum to take off. So you are, you are on the runway now. Before it was somewhere else, but God has brought us on the runway and ready to take off. And um, I can't wait to see what God is going to do and store for all of us. So thank you. So everyone who is part of the business tribe, welcome everyone. Thank you for participating. I know you had several meetings and uh, next week, this two weeks actually, to this week and next week, you will hear from Business Tribe today. And I think Charbert will share more about it. He is loaded and ready. So let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Any prayer requests? Anybody has any prayer requests before I pray? I know a couple of prayer requests I saw it on the chat. Uh, let's pray for Jan, for she needed a car, she needed her family, finances, breakthrough. Katie, yes, I see your hand. Hi, uh, yes. Um, I, I mentioned, you know, a while back that my niece lost her son a few months back um, after a real hard time in the hospital. So I got to hear Melissa laugh for the first time yesterday, and it was such a joy. So if you could just keep Melissa in your prayers. She did accept the Lord as her Savior, and so did her son before he passed. So she's letting me disciple her kind of. And so if you guys could just keep praying for her, I appreciate that. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you. Ready? Yes, Apostle, thank you so much. Um, I'm asking for prayers. My wife, she's expecting uh, probably next month. So she's having a leg challenge. So <laughs> she, she has, she has a, her left leg is troubling her. So I pray that... Uh, there will be no complications because we've been believing God for our fourth born child for a long time since we joined the kingdom. We've been telling God, God, show us because we tried in religion. There was nothing going on. Some people gave us some wrong prophecies. But when we came into the kingdom uh, last year, the Lord blessed us with, uh, uh, with the fruit of the womb. Now we are expecting the fourth child. And uh, we are hoping to name this child dangerously. So please... Apostle and everyone, the kingdom family, the ecclesia family, pray for us so that uh, there will be no complications and may God bless uh, the kingdom family. God bless you. Thank you. What, what are you going to name him? I will name this child dangerously. So I, I, I'm praying to God to name him dangerously. <laughs> you told me before you were going to name him something different. Did you change your mind or something? Yes. No, I haven't changed my mind. <laughs> if he's a male, he's going to be Abraham. So <laughs> very soon. <laughs> okay, 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 I forgive you. <laughs> okay, we'll play. What, what's, it, what's her name? Uh, my wife is Alice. Alice. Okay, Alice. Yes. Uh, and, okay, J uh, Jefferson, I see your hand. Hallelujah. And good evening, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear? Okay. Yeah, please, I want us to pray for my mother. Um, she's supposed to have a surgery on her eyes, and she's supposed to travel to another state to have that and um, to have the surgery. So I want us to pray for her that she is safe. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And um, Abraham? Yeah, just mm -hmm. stop. And oh, sorry. Messages to Hold on, Martin. Due to the insecurity, he would. Jefferson, we can't hear you. We lost you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now, but it was. Okay. I heard the word insecurity. Oh. 
No, I mean, she's traveling for her surgery. That's my mother. Her oh. eye surgery, she's traveling. Yeah. So we pray for a safe journey because um, on the highways, there are issues of kidnappings and all these things. So we pray for journey messages that may she go and come back safely. And also may she have a successful surgery in her eyes in Jesus' name. So I want us to pray for her. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Martin and Victoria. Hi everyone. Um, uh, dear Iglesia, I, um, I was wondering whether you can pray for my mother. She is experiencing pain all over her body. Um, she, 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 she has a disability because of, on account of an operation that went wrong and she almost was left on a, on a, a wheelchair. But now she, she, she works on crutches and um, she is in so much pain and my mom is a very strong woman. I mean, she is tough, but uh, it's gotten to a point with this heat wave that she's experiencing the pain even more to the point that it's affecting her character. And, and we are constantly bickering with one another because it's, it's too much. She, she picks on me because she's so frustrated. And I am also so frustrated because I, I I understand her pain, but is 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 I'm I'm feeling overwhelmed right now. So I was wondering whether you can pray for for her. Mm, definitely. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Martin. You were going to say something? Yes. Yes. Quick. Um, just for um continued prayer for my family, but especially our son Jordan. Um, mentioned couple having some issues and really seeing some satanic manifestations in a lot of his behavioral patterns and we we know god has certainly um, promised us his deliverance and his success and at different points we we, we see different things and um, even this morning interestingly on sundays and we've had this for a long time and sundays we we it's like the behavior heightens for some strange reason well it's not strange but the behavior is going to overdrive and we we continue to believe god we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that this boy is certainly a promise and um we, we we see where the enemy is going full out that he wants to destroy him we will not we will not allow that but we also believe that there are some hard lessons that he will have, have to learn and we ask that if that time do come when it comes that you god will be merciful to him so in a nutshell that's it what's his name again please jordan his name jordan. is jordan ellis so let's we have received some important prayers there. so let's pray let's pray as a family uh ecclesia for all this prayer because mothers that they need healing protection and uh, freddie's wife and jan need miracle breakthrough and Jefferson's mother, Victoria's mother, Martin's son. Um, how can I miss his name again? <laughs> Jordan. Jordan, yes. Father, we thank you. And let's pray for Charbred, who's going to share with us today. Father, we thank you for supernatural miracle. Healing touch upon everyone who need healing now in their physical bodies. Every prayer request that has been shared. Melissa. And everyone, Father, Freddie's wife, Victoria's mother, and Jefferson's mother, Father, I thank you. Thank you for bringing unity, Father. I thank you for your healing power to flow through her as we pray. Everyone, protection, favor, angels being released, those who are traveling, those who are in the hospital, those who need, Father, breakthroughs. I feel the glory of God. I thank you, Father, for a supernatural turnaround. And we lift up Jordan, Father, for deliverance. Every legal rights the enemy has in his life, whatever doors have been opened, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for complete deliverance, Father, freedom. We declare your purpose and your destiny to manifest that he will walk in your calling and your assignment in Jesus Christ's holy name. I thank you for peace upon everyone. 
I thank you for the word that we are going to hear today, Father. I thank you for anointing my brother, child, bread, Father. I thank you for your calling and your assignment upon his life. Thank you for that you're, he's an ambassador of your kingdom, Father, to the Caribbean and beyond. I thank you for that couple, Father. I thank you for your calling. Thank you for calling them as a family, appointing them, Father. We thank you. We commit them in your hands. Thank you for your protection and your favor and your provision for the continued treatment and everything they need, the travels, everything they're doing, Father, meetings, Father. I thank you for giving favor with the leaders, with the business people, with the governments in those countries, Father. I thank you for anointing his mouth today to speak, to bring kingdom business. I thank you, Lord, for your favor. Thank you for your glory. I thank you for blessing us this morning and this evening, whatever time zone we are in. We love you. We honor you, Father. Lord Jesus, you said you will build your ecclesia and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We bless you for it. We thank you for being in our midst. We welcome you, our King, our Lord. We honor you. We bow our head before you. We worship you. We praise you. We thank you for this privilege. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. You know, on good news, I want to share, I have been busy writing. Amen. This new book is called Birthing of a Kingdom Nation. And I'm believing to release it before the end of this year. And this is the best yet. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to, to edit it and release it because whatever you have missed so far, it's going to be in this book. <laughs> what are the other 13 volumes? So thank you and thank you for your prayers. Keep me in your prayers that God will give me everything I need to put in that book. And uh, thanking God for his grace and his mercy. Thank you for your support. Thank you for standing with me. You are the backbone of this ministry, what God is doing around the globe in all the 30 plus countries, um, what God is doing. So we thank you and appreciate you. And we are so grateful for your faithfulness, your commitment, your prayers, your giving. It means a world to me. And I thank God for you. So, Charbert, my brother, we are so blessed and honored to have you with us. Share with us what's happening in the business tribe. What's the plan for today and next week? So, the platform is yours. <laughs> Let's welcome Charbert. Thank you. Thank you, Abraham. Good morning, good evening, good night, good afternoon to our global family. Hope everyone can hear me clearly. Yes. Awesome, awesome. So we are happy for the opportunity and the privilege to just talk and share some thoughts. Um, share some thoughts, share some thoughts, all right? Um, this Sunday, of course, I will share a few thoughts and next Sunday other um, members of the tribe, the business tribe will be sharing some thoughts as well. And I hope that would provoke, um, let me use the word, the voice of God. Yeah, and we would be able to draw, distill and um, gain sight of his plan, his blueprint. All right, and we cause that to be expressed uh, in our operations in the earth, wherever we are at. So um, please keep us in prayer that we access divine thoughts and divine intent. So I'll just share a few thoughts. Um, uh, let me just see if I could share my screen. Okay, it looks like it. So just give me one moment. Let me try to open this. And sounds good. So, yeah. I will just for the presentation shut off my camera. One moment. Okay, so we just want to talk or sh share some thoughts on um, the kingdom business 
and let's see how far we can get into the conversation. And maybe we will take the approach of having this more like a conversation. I think there, there is a text that says we have the mind of Christ. So the totality of the mind of Christ is not just with one person, but with all of us together sharing different perspective and sighting. All right. So we'd like for us to look at um, examining our starting context, looking at our starting context, where we are at. And what we are sharing today would not be limited to just the business tribe. But let's look and see what God wants to communicate to all tribes and um, even to persons in their own personal context. What is that message he wants to communicate? So the first thing I would like for us to look at is what a kingdom business is not. What a kingdom business is not. A kingdom business is not necessarily um, a business that is run and operated by a Christian. Let's use this word in parentheses. All right. Uh, so we want to look at it. What a kingdom business is not. So we can say it is not a tool to make money using the Bible. All right. So kingdom business is not a tool to make money using the Bible. I just mentioned the fact about um, you can have a Christian person with a business, but that business of itself does not necessarily mean that it is a kingdom business because the operating principles of that business may be purely Babylonian and has nothing uh, relating to kingdom operations and kingdom principles. So just the naming does not necessarily suggest to say it represents the kingdom values. So, a business may be, of course, the objective of the business is, is revenue, all right? Um, but money is generated through obedience to the king. And not just anyhow. So the objective is to generate revenue, money, through obedience to the king. Why is that so? Well, we can see that the king already has money. All right? And what is needed is proper stewardship of the king's resources. So the king already has money, he has land, he has gold and silver and oil and, and uh, diamonds and so forth. But what is needed is to have stewards who would look after and over the resources of that authority, of that king. Uh, we would remember the text in the scripture that talks about an authority who came and gave talents to citizens. To one, he gave five. To another, he gave two. And to another, he gave one. The citizens had a responsibility to steward the talents or the resources of the authority in a certain manner, where that authority could see the resources expanding, increasing, and advancing, and developing, and evolving. So, in the same way, the authority in the kingdom to which we pledge allegiance has an expectation of us as citizens to steward his resources, which he has made us trustees over. And when that happens, we generate revenue 
because we are now in compliance, in obedience to the king. So, what a kingdom business is not. So, it is not an engineered mechanism designed for us to isolate ourselves from the world. So, it's not a mechanism designed for us to isolate ourselves from the world. Abraham earlier made a statement or refer to a statement that man needs land and land needs man. So one cannot be divorced from the other. So a kingdom business does not provide an opportunity for us to be divorced, separated from the earth as it were. But we can say this. A kingdom business should take us further into the world where darkness is deeply entrenched. Yeah? So a kingdom business should take us further into the world where darkness is deeply entrenched. Why should we go where darkness is deeply entrenched? Well, we are the light of the world. And it is only in the context of darkness that the beauty of light can be appreciated. So, there is a demand on us now having sight of the kingdom, but also have a transformation of our philosophy and mindset as it relates to kingdom operations, whether it's in business, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in education, whatever sphere or field we have been called or assigned to, his perspective and his sight, his philosophy, that which flows out of the king and is being expressed through us, his citizenry, which is a critical consideration. So we should not desire to be removed out of the world, but desire to be strategically positioned where darkness is deeply entrenched. So in the case where there is absolute injustice with regards to resources in the earth, we are there to bring equalization. We are there as kingdom citizens to cause light to shine that there is proper equity and, and the distribution of the king's resource and proper stewardship and management of his resource. You see, for us, the motivation is not prosperity. The motivation is not prosperity, but the motivation is allowing the king's desire to be expressed in us and through us. And we can say this, prosperity will come and prosperity will vary depending on your context. Even if it means that prosperity for you may speak to the collection of the crumbs which fills 12 baskets. You may not have a whole loaf, but the weight and the, the significance, the value of crumbs filling 12 baskets, that is just mind blowing. But for someone, they may want to disregard that. But here it is that we could see prosperity in that context. So we want to guard ourselves as kingdom citizens. The motivation is not prosperity, but the motivation is his will, his desires, his thoughts, the thing that is in his heart, 
we are partnering with him in whatever jurisdiction we are at, causing that thing to express itself and to be realized. Now, this image before us is somewhat of a little bit of art construction something. <laughs> so the right and the left, we're seeing a column. So this guy is seeming looking to build a house. Then we are seeing a beam and we are seeing something that we would call a slab, all right? But observe something in the beam that is part of a, a, a structure, we see cracks. These cracks, of course, will compromise the integrity of the structure. And what we want to do as kingdom citizens is to identify the cracks that are, we can say within our lives, that would compromise or potentially compromise the, the, the integrity of the king's business. And we could look at cracks as incorrect mentalities. How do we see money? How do we see resources? Uh, cracks could be also considered as personal desires or an, an, a personal obsession and, and maybe ego, etc. Is this thing geared towards one having name, as it were, or is it geared towards allowing his thoughts to find full expression in business, in healthcare, in education. So what are these cracks? Trauma could be a, a significant crack. Just imagine someone would have maybe been in a partnership with another person and uh, the partnership would have fallen through the cracks because issues arose and you know you would have gotten hurt as it will. And the mentality is developed that I'm not partnering with anybody especially those who come under the name of so-and-so, all right? This says a lot. Yeah, this speaks volume. And of course, there is a need for healing and deliverance from, from, from that experience in order to adequately and effectively build what he wants built in the earth or what he is building in the earth. And as we partner and come into alignment with the building process, those issues have to be dealt with. You know, um, the text tells us this, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build, they labor in vain. And our labor is not, we are not desirous of laboring in vain. So therefore, everything and anything that would mitigate against effective construction must be dealt with. The issue of socioeconomic condition. And I was just thinking about that part and looking at the question, let me put it this way. So just imagine, visualize you're out with your friends. You're maybe on the beach or at the riverside and you're cooking food. But one of the friends seemed to be very greedy, very greedy. Would you give him the opportunity to share the food? Well, maybe he may choose the choice pieces of meat. Maybe he may put it for himself, <laughs> you know? Um, what would you do? Now, what if that friend would have come out of a context of object poverty, right? Absolute poverty. And he's now in a situation where he sees resources. What does he now do? That, I think, is a critical consideration for us to look at. And to be one healed from these situations, be delivered from them, in order that they pose no 
threat, as it were, towards the forward issue of building, all right, and to the foundational issues that would be critical. That would determine how strong, how sturdy our building initiative would be. How cohesive is this and the different components coming together? Is the building able to withstand pressure and would it be compromised or not depending on how we build, whether we are building with unresolved uh, issues as it will, or patterns which we would have adapted from a Babylonian context and perhaps just now painting it over with a nice Christianized concept. So just a few areas for consideration. So what does a, a kingdom business look like? On what it is? When we talk about a kingdom business, what are we talking? What are we um, speaking towards? What does it look like? What kind of shape, image, or impression that comes to our mind? So we can say this, a kingdom business is a profit-making enterprise under the leadership of Jesus Christ and operated by a kingdom citizen. One, it is a profit-making enterprise under the leadership of Jesus Christ operated by a kingdom citizen. Lordship. Yeah, lordship. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Under the lordship of Jesus Christ, operated by a kingdom citizen. The critical consideration is, is this business that I'm in or desirous of building or engaging in, am I bringing this business or is it operating from that context or that standpoint? That's a critical consideration because that has several implications, whether it is under his lordship or not, there would be significant implications there, therein. And we want to look at a few um, areas. When we consider bringing a, an enterprise, a business uh, or a tribe or a personal life, as it will, under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. One, it honors Jesus as Lord through the, um, the things it produces, the services it offers, the products it invents. It gears, it focuses on honoring Jesus through its activity and initiative. So maybe one of the ways we can audit if you are already in business or have an existing business is look at this critically. Is this product, service, um, context honoring and how is it honoring? And of course, those may speak to various contexts. All right. Um, so that's a critical consideration. It is managed based on, on, on usually with biblical principles. Let's look at kingdom principles. What are the foundational issues or the drivers of my business? What are the things that are propelling the business? What are the issues or the things that are not seen in the back room, the back engine, the, that are hidden? from the general public, the principles, those are going to be 
significant in looking at positioning our business, our activity from a kingdom standpoint. It also serves as light in the marketplace. It serves as light in the marketplace. So no matter what darkness that exists there, and darkness could speak to several things, could speak to the question of integrity. It could speak to the questions of ethics. Is this business operated with um, excellence and decorum? Is it operating with a sense of excellence? You know, um, the operations being very ethical. Uh, light could speak into that. Huh? It's not just um, looking at profit at all cost, but are we carrying out the activity, the exercise, in the most effective, the most prudent way, the most uh, responsible manner, as it were, in the marketplace. Yeah? And a critical consideration is that profits of that enterprise is used for the advancement of God's kingdom in the earth. So, it's not just about giving a 10% <laughs> uh, of tithing, as it were. But how is this business, this enterprise, contributing, advancing, and seeing itself supporting kingdom in the earth? And, yeah. <laughs> so, that's a, a, a question that we would ask, and we can... Um, Look at that in terms of our operation. How is this business advancing, if at all, the kingdom of God in the earth? All right, so that would be crucial, crucial, crucial. First of all, the resources come from Him. All right. And we want to see it in this context. One, it is God's business. All right? It is his resource. It belongs to him. The scripture tells us that all things were created by him and for him. So it is his business. Now, this business is being managed God's way. Now, God's way may be absolutely contrary to our way as it will. Our ways may be marred by our cultural behavior, practices, uh, our norms, you know. Uh, they may be contrary to what God's demand or desire or way or thought is, yeah? But significantly, that business is managed by God's steward for God's purpose. So we want to see this. It's not my business, yeah, but it's God's business. It's managed God's way by God's steward for God's purpose. When we now take the approach as being a steward, which means there is the question of accountability, and I now need to account just like the guy with the five talents or the the one with the two talents, I now need to uh, show accountability for the business opportunity that have been entrusted into my care. I cannot be irresponsible in the management and the stewardship of the business enterprise. And it cannot be a situation, ought not to be a situation where the resource is lavished on me as it were. the authority, the sovereign Lord has an expectation and a demand why he choose to give his business over to an individual or citizen, part of his uh, territory to exercise rulership over his affairs. And that makes it 
you could say frightening because there is going to come a time of reckoning where I have to account, where we have to account, yeah? If it is just yours, you could do what you want with it, but it is uh, the property of an authority. Therefore, I cannot just do what I want with, with it. There is now a certain responsibility and a certain posture in which we now assume or we now take upon ourselves. So, some critical benchmark or some matters that we could look to evaluate, to assess, to audit our activity. Does that activity, business, service, industry, sector that I'm in, does it honor the Lord Jesus Christ? What are the principles that are driving, fueling, uh, creating the culture of that environment? Are these principles based on the kingdom values or is it based on cultural context? Now, this enterprise is operating, this practice, this office is operating in the marketplace, but what level of light is it transmitting? What level of light is it causing to find and causing to express in the marketplace? A critical consideration when we talk about light, the text tells us is that let's take heed that the light we have, that we think we are <laughs> displayed light, but it's absolute darkness. I think that is a very strong position for us to consider. My operation, I presume, I assume it's light, but let me really check that and not realize or find that the light that I think that is being displayed is actually darkness because my pattern behavior is nothing different from the Babylonian context that we would have been brought up in, that we would have grown up in, that we would have been schooled in as it were. And is this business, this enterprise, this practice, what I'm involved in, is it advancing kingdom purpose and how it is doing that? And of course, one person may say, but um, I have, um, I support missionaries. <laughs> okay. But missionaries may be more just um, uh, using issues of religion. Let me put it this way. So I, I don't want to call any name of any organization, so let's, let's leave it that way. So, but uh, I'm going to send a missionary to um, South Africa. But the missionary goes there creating, let me use the word, subjects in the name of their organization. So then you have the expansion of denomination. But is, is, it, is it the expansion of, of, of God's kingdom? And I say, yeah, I'm financing that. So maybe that is something that ought to be looked at if at all, uh, we are um, engaged in such, yeah, and, and evaluate how the kingdom is being advanced through the use and support of our finances. Um, yeah, so again, it's God's business. It is managed God's way. It is managed by God's steward for his purpose. And that is a very compelling posture for us to assume. And of course, we can uh, look at a few um, scriptures here. We alluded to the issue of the talents before, uh, but this text in um, Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18, which says, you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he saw to your fathers 
as it is this thing. What I like about this capture is that it points to the direction in which and the purpose of which God allows wealth to be created. So wealth is created not for the question of our prosperity, let me put it this way, but is to confirm, to advance, to validate, to cause to be expressed the covenant which the kingdom has sown. Again, we talked about it is his resource, yeah? So he has an obligation. He has a mindset. He has a vision. There is something in his heart he wants to see expressed. And we are the ones to do it. And he has provided all that is needed. And the responsibility is on us now to steward this so that his covenant and what is this covenant that he's talking about? Amongst many things, God is desirous in building a nation. Yeah? He wants to build a nation, build a kingdom nation. And the resource is used. The wealth is used precisely to do that. So let's look at the current context and um, let's look at the recurrent context. And this was, uh, uh, we could just use a capture of the business tribe, but we could use this for every other tribe. So what we are seeing in this image are a lot of parts. These parts are decently organized. There's a certain sequence uh, in which they are laid out. And we can say, look at this as a representation of our tribe. There's a certain sequence in which things are laid out. And we can identify these things as maybe saying that they are a groupings of people with you know, strong common interests. So we can say they are clans, whether it's real estate plan, agriculture, tourism, healthcare, food, restaurant, innovation, persons who are passionate about the environment, skills, crafts, etc. All these are, are clans, right? But it is not sufficient for us to remain uh, at this location with this formation. There is a need for us to move further and to migrate. One, it is very necessary to understand um, the fit, where we are, uh, uh, um, to be aligned. But that in itself would require us to do the next step. So we now need to transition from just being a collection of clans to what we could say is functional oneness, all right? So the, the, the kingdom business tribe or the kingdom health tribe or the kingdom education tribe with different clans have one objective, is to come to a place of functionality. So all of these parts must now be assembled into a perfect functioning machinery suitable for kingdom purpose. Yeah? Got it. Yeah. So all of these parts now need to transition, move, come to a place of functional oneness. Kingdom business tribe, we need to be assembled into a perfect functioning machinery suitable for kingdom purpose. The healthcare tribe with its clans need to come to a place of functional oneness 
where we are assembled into a perfect functioning machinery suitable for kingdom purpose. And these concepts, we can uh, um, connect them to all tribes, any tribe as it were. We move from just being a collection of parts because you see, the image to your left are parts used for the construction of a BMW engine. So just imagine what uh, 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 the BMW would have been like when you see James Bond movie, the velocity in which it moves and so forth. But if we remain at just the collection of parts, how much more are we shooting ourselves in the foot? Yeah? By just remaining there. So our end game is to come to a place of functional oneness. So, when we come to a place of functional oneness, all right, assembled into perfect functioning machinery, suitable for kingdom purpose, we are going to realize some issues. We will begin to see the question of strategic nation transformation. Because if we say, and we agree that the intent of God or the kingdom demand is for us to go to um, a jurisdiction called A and to address developmental issues in that nation, we are guaranteed that that place will be transformed. Yeah? We will realize the question of the wealth transfer because we are not just individual parts, but we are now a fully functioning machinery, suitable and executing kingdom purpose. So the question of wealth transfer would be realized. The issue of equalization comes to play. And um, when we talk about equalization, one, one of the the captures that I like to refer to would be Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a little old man, a little old man was he. That's what religion told us, right? But they never really told us or caused us to see the kingdom at work there. So Zacchaeus was a little old man, very short. That is what they say. But he climbed up a sycamore tree and Jesus was passing under. And Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down for today. I am going to your house. But something happened at Zacchaeus' house. Something happened maybe on the way. Something happened to Zacchaeus that he said. You know, he, know, he, he was a tax collector. And you know he robbed the people uh, deliberately. And he made the statement, if I have taken too much from you, I'm going to give back four times as much. Something happened when he encountered the totality or the expression of the kingdom. Yeah? The point is, when we are operating from this posture, there will be equalization. So it won't be a situation where the haves have and the have not will continue to have not. We will eliminate the gap and the disparity between and the gulf between uh, these segments. We see a picture in, in the scriptures where he talked about the lion and the lamb would lie down together. Can you imagine that? That that disparity that existed, that gap that was there, have now. Yeah. We see the issue of cultural reformation. A new culture would be realized. A new culture. Is there anything you have, huh? Yeah. And then we see this amplified and echoed through our brother John when he said in Revelations, then the seventh angel sounded, 
And there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Hey, beloved, this is doable. We can do this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is doable. We are able to possess. We are able to cause the kingdom of God to express powerfully and fully in the nations. Because there is a, a summons out for us. What is what this, the text tells us, you know, that creation is groaning and waiting, it's travailing as a woman in pain for the sons of the kingdom to step forward. This is who we are. And this is our resolve to step forward and cause his kingdom to be realized powerfully in our sphere. So Abraham, I will stop now and hand back over to you, sir. (laughs) Wow, my goodness, graciousness. Thank you, Jesus. See, this is what I've been saying, what God is doing. Only he can do. I'm so grateful. Thank you, my brother. This is this is a course that you will be teaching pretty soon. <laughs> Kingdom business course, brother. And it's very foundational. Extremely important. Extremely important. Not just for the Kingdom business tribe, but for all of us. Like one of my dearest friends says, we're supposed to function like a well-oiled machine. The whole tribes, the whole nation coming together and fulfilling our kingdom assignment to see God's will done on earth as it is in heaven. You heard me say that hundreds of times because God never intended life on earth to be any different than life in heaven. That's why he put us here with the spirit inside a body. With the spirit, you access heaven, connect with God. Through the body, you manifest what you see on the earth in the natural. So thank you, Charbrad. This is extremely, extremely important what you just shared. I can't emphasize it. And it is very timely. So this is not an accident. This is not a, you know... Um, but what you brought, what God has put in your heart to share, it's very timely for where we are now and where God is taking us as an ecclesia, as a kingdom, birthing this kingdom nation. So I'm so grateful and appreciate you. Thank you for your time and preparing this excellent presentation. And we'll be hearing more actually next week I hope so, Charbert. You have a specific project that you're dreaming about. Breaking up. You were breaking up. Advancing his kingdom in the world. And um, when Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. that every single one of us have a business and that our business is to advance doing and whatever industry in the world that we're going into, that it is about his kingdom being manifested in that place. Money secondary. And you talked about stewardship and that resonated a lot because um, I speak a lot on um, stewardship, but that was excellent, my brother. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, um, I got a lot out of it. Appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Abraham, whilst you dropped out, we just thought of just sharing the. the oh, he's gone again. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, my Wi Fi connection. Oh, here. I'm yeah, back. Okay. But what I was sharing was 
next week, I believe, Charbred, you have a specific project that you are working on. And I know many of you might have heard it already on the Business Tribe. I think you presented it, but I would like you to present it to the whole Ecclesia family. Let them hear it. And those who want to be part of it, let them jump in and see where God will take us because we are going to jump into the river. Wherever God takes us, <laughs> we will end up there. So thank you so much. And, and we'll be hearing from different tribes in the future what God is doing through them. Healthcare tribe, education tribe, clans, the different clans, even under different tribes, we'll have different clans focusing on specific things under that tribe because business tribe is a huge venture, huge vision. You know, every business won't be the same like real estate, innovation, um, so many branches and clients and families under it. They're focusing on different aspect of it, even healthcare. So as God leads us, expands us, we will just flow with him. So if anybody has any questions or comments on, I know theory already shared but anybody else have any questions or comments on what you heard today? And for Charbred, this is your moment to share. So I see two hands there, Martin and Jefferson. Or anybody else wants to go, please go. Yes. Um, hi again, everyone. Um, Charbred, really want to thank you for that presentation. Very, very I think this word has become, sir, forgive my language, but it has been so prostituted now. It has, be, it has, it has become so common that you see someone in a car and they say, oh, this is a kingdom car and they have a dog. And, and I'm not being funny. They say this is a kingdom dog and everything they have attached this so-called kingdom thing to. And it has, it has weakened and diminished the true meaning and the true value value of it. And even regarding the whole thing of kingdom business, um, of yeah, course, yeah. as well, well, Sherwood made the clear distinction between um, a Christian having a business and a kingdom business, because that's the other confusion, I think, that that has gone into the whole system. And I love us. Thank you for really bringing clarity and an insight, Sherrod, because it means, therefore, that most of us, including myself, as I do have a business, and I don't necessarily call it kids, even though I try my best to, to employ and to apply all the kingdom principles and values. But I think we're going to have to seriously look again in what we're doing, the general operation, and see how intrinsically it is tied with kingdom values, kingdom principles, and kingdom way of life. And I really, as I said, I really want to thank you for expounding and, and, and taking this pretty much to the next level um, because it, it has to come from, it has to come out of our relationship, out of the bowels of our experience. Whatever we do, I believe, whatever we do from here on out has to come. And if we, if we, if we make the kingdom claim then it means that everything that we do, it not 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 in an arbitrary and a nonchalant way, but in an in a real and an impactful way where it is it is different, not just look different, sound different, but the core of it is different. And and I, and I think this is what I got from just your liberation, Sherbert. And again, wanna thank you, brother, and um, bless God. Amen. That's it. Amen. Yes. Just because a Christian is running a business, that's not kingdom business. I have shared that. Even I haven't done the teaching on the kingdom business yet because different tribes teaching it's coming. But this was very foundational and much needed. So I was blessed. Michael and then Uniki and Freddie. Go ahead, please. Uh, I think Fred was before me, uh, Ibram, but I can go. It's fine. Uh, 
So I, would, I just want to thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's a great honor to be here tonight. Uh, thank you very much for that presentation. I think uh, uh, the word uh, that we got last year was transition. And I think uh, we went <laughs> actually through Yal to transition and to come to a place where we are now. And I think the next thing, in, 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 and that's what stand out for me tonight was uh, like a, a, a reformation. I know, Abram, you talked about uh, reform, the re before reformation and reborn and all of those things early, somewhere earlier <coughs> in this year. Uh, and it, it, it's like uh, what he talked about tonight is like God is bringing us back to uh, realignment is how it should be and how it should function uh, and, and, and bring us back to accuracy. Uh, so uh, uh, the presentation tonight is actually bringing us before you can start anything. It, it's need, we need to make sure that it is what the mind of Christ is actually saying to us to do it. Uh, because I think there is no more time to waste like we have wasted up till now in the church to miss uh, 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 the kingdom ob objective of our father. So uh, thank you very much for the presentation tonight and, and it's bringing us uh, really uh, uh, to true alignment of what was in the mind of the father with business, with agriculture, uh, with family and, and to make sure that, that, that the journey that we are going forward is, is, is actually accurate. And then just the last point, I think uh, if we come to accuracy, uh, then if we take our businesses, we then uh, bring our businesses and do business in rest and not in toil. It's becoming a work and not a job. I think uh, uh, that is also helpful when we come to accuracy. So thank you very much. Mm, thank you, Michael. Uh, Freddie. Um, thank you, Apostle. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank you, uh, King Chabet, for the powerful presentation. I want to really appreciate God. I was very touched, especially on the, the foundation issues where we talked about cracks in that starts and it cannot grow. It cannot grow in line with God. So really, that was so powerful, and I pray that um, the Lord will help us, even as we are learning on the kingdom nation, so that God gives us the ability and uh, the wisdom to build accurately, to build, you know, without uh, no, uh, 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 ambitions, you know, the I, I, the spirit and the, you know, uh, personal ideas but really having the mind of christ so i'm so blessed and i'm so happy i pray that the lord will really help us to understand this uh presentation this message so deeply so that the kingdoms of, of the year becomes the kingdom of our god and lord jesus christ god bless you hoping to hear more from Well, I think the Wi-Fi connection somewhere is not stable. Uh, Uniki, please go. Yes, sir. Um, uh, actually, um, while Charlotte was pre presenting, um, I was I'm, I was reminded about a scripture. I, I, I don't know in what part, but it's in one of the Gospels where Jesus went uh, to call Peter. It's a, a certain account. And Peter with others had been toiling all night to fish, <laughs> to find fish. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, actually they came on shore, they were tired, and there comes this Jesus and he says, uh, you know, go back and throw your nets <laughs> on the other side. And, and Peter gives this skeptical answer, you know, it's like we've been, we're these experienced fishermen, but don't worry, on your word, we'll do it. And he does that, and he was successful. They were successful that even others had to come. Uh, 
I, I believe there's a prophetic message and uh, I loved what uh, Michael was saying, Michael Smith, and he spoke uh, uh, to that. And, and let me see what I wrote something down. You, you know, um, even the everything with regards to the business tribe and all other tribes, while we are putting our shoulder under the work and to uh, to do what we believe we needs to happen the kingdom we uh, i think uh, and what what i'm hearing is that um yes this kingdom expression will happen upon his word it will only work upon his word it doesn't have to do with ambition if we have the experience but that expression will come based upon his word and uh, you know Lack of money is not the issue, but it's the, the challenge. And I think while that God is taking his time, really, because things can go faster if we want, <laughs> if he wants, but it's, he's taking the time for us to learn, to move upon his word. There's this prophecy about Jesus. He said uh, he has, no, what was it? something about he's giving me the tongue of the learned, He's, he's le- teaching me how to listen. And I think that is something that is being crafted into, uh, into the body of Christ, the ecclesia as well. So that is what I was hearing. Also for businesses, if you're also a business person, for the, to, to be a kingdom business, we have to learn to move upon his word. Amen. Even if it sounds ridiculous, actually. <laughs> Amen. That's what I wanted to share. Amen. Thank you. That's excellent. Uh, Jefferson. Good evening, everyone. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, mine is more of a comment and also a question. My comment um, is um, based on the operations in terms of handling kingdom businesses. Um, I think the idea is um, this operation should be based on mentoring um, souls into the kin- uh, business kingdom. You know, we talked about staying away from the Babylonian system into the kingdom system. I had an idea of um, a kind of operations which involve bringing people, not as employers, but as people to mentor them into the world of business to, in order for them to understand that they are not working to, for survival, but they are working in growth in order to establish themselves in the kingdom through business. So I see that that is um, a nice way to bring in um, productive people into the kingdom business or the kingdom tribe. That is my own observation. And thank you very much, Alexander um, Shabbat, for your contributions. I really appreciate God because I've been going through a lot this week and I was checking my intentions into my business world and I was trying to sieve out the things, am I motivated based on the things of the world or am I motivated based on bringing um, the kingdom language to the world through business? So my question is, um, in terms of partnership, um, is it necessary we partner with people who are kingdom minded in the sense that, okay, you're about to start um, a particular business and you have partners who are interested in such business, but you know that they are not really the kingdom-minded. However, they are religious in a way, but they are not really kingdom-minded. So is it advisable to partner with them, saying to you that maybe the spirit can help them to understand your philosophies of the business? Or um, is, it be- is it better for us to get kingdom-minded people to partner in such kind of cases? Chabrick, I will let you go. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a very good question, uh, Jefferson. A very good question. And the first thing that jumps out to me is this. Two cannot walk together, at least they agree. Yeah? Two cannot walk together, at least they agree. There is another scenario that jumps out to my mind. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase it because I, I can't get the reference right now. Um, these guys were building, all right? And some other guys came to them and they said, we too like you, 
have been given sacrifice to our God. But you know, the guys who were constructing said to these fellows, you have no part, no lot in what we are doing. What it says to me, the sameness of activity is not the basis for collaboration. Yeah? The sameness of activity is not the basis for collaboration. And combine that with the fact that we cannot work together, at least we agree. All right? And we have the instruction, the commitment, and the promise is that the spirit of truth will lead us and guide us. And we will find the affirmation and the confirmation of the Holy Spirit as to who do we engage with in terms of a business partnership. Mm-hmm. Hope that's helpful, Jeff. Yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you very much. And also there are different levels of partnership. You know, like those who are in the inner circle, those who are like launching, you know, that your hearts are connected. That has to be kingdom people. But then when you launch the business, somebody else is producing that part of that engine that you just saw. You know, like they say, a car has 25,000 parts. One of my dear friend is a car dealer. He has 12 car dealership, started with one. (laughs) So he told me one car is made of minimum 25,000 parts. And each of those parts are made in different countries. Many of them come from Mexico, Canada, Taiwan, China, India. Then they all come together into one plant, assembly plant, and they put it together. So they make these agreements with all these different manufacturing plants across the globe to produce that part for that company. And then they bring it, ship it into one location, put those parts together, make that car or the engine, then it is gone. So when you make an agreement or a partnership with one of those companies somewhere out there, because you need a part, and that could be an unbeliever, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. There is absolutely wrong with it, having a a partnership or somebody is producing something for you because you need that part to run the whole system. But in your inner circle, where you're having the building of kingdom nation, like Charbert said, I would encourage that must be kingdom people, like-minded, walking in agreement, heart-to-heart, connected, and you are pushing God's kingdom agenda on earth. And that's important. Okay? So that's, that's good. And one thing I'm blessed. Thank you very much. This is what I forgot to tell you. I think Jefferson, you also reminded that. One thing I've been blessed to hear how the language have changed in many of you. What you have said and spoke, how you spoke two years ago, is not how you speak now. Your language has changed. You have learned the kingdom language what comes out of you, you know, because the kingdom message has permeated into your spirit man. And you have conceived with the vision that God has for this earth and for mankind for centuries. He's been waiting. So to, to, to hear that language, the change of that language, I had to change that in my life. You know, when I grew up in religion, church, trying to take everybody out of this planet, <laughs> God said, no, you keep them where I put them. Don't take them out of this planet. I put them where I needed them. So leave them alone. (laughs) So I had to change my language. I had to learn the kingdom language from the king. And whatever I learned, I shared with you, you know. So, So when you share some of the posts in the groups, the change of language, I'm so grateful and when you, when you hear, when you see the right things, when you hear you speak, you can know the kingdom of God is within you. And that baby is leaping and kicking to manifest. 
on the earth in different forms, different ways, in business, in arts, in prayer. And, you know, you see Delta, what she does sitting there some of these times and listening to this message, <laughs> she's weeping. <laughs> that is there. That is the grace God gave to her, you know. And, and what you heard, the grace that God gave to Charbrook today, and it's much more coming. So thank you, everyone. Anybody has anybody else have any more comments or questions before we close? Oh, Charbert, do you have anything? Nothing further, sir. Okay, good. Well, uh, Jan, yes, we are going to pray for Jan. I'm so sorry. My sincere apologies, Jan. You know, I I prayed for everybody, but specifically I didn't mention your name. I'm going to pray for you and your family. And also my brother Jesse mentioned a prayer because his niece, who is nine months old, did you say or nine years old? Jesse, let me see. Nine months, brother. Nine months old. And and that child need a miracle. Uh, there's going to some medical challenges there. So agree with me in prayer. So Jan, do you have something to share before we pray? Um, yes, I just wanted to share. I know you guys, um, I hope you guys can hear me. I'm walking, so there's a lot of noise in the background. So I apologize for that. Um, I just wanted to share um, something. I, I don't recall um, sharing this with you guys. So you guys know that I have a heart condition and stuff like that. So I found out about probably a couple of weeks ago that the medication that I'm taking for my heart um, is causing me, causing my, my bones to hurt and it, it's, it's making them brittle, I, I guess like weak. And I'm also having nerve pain at the same time. Um, I've been trying to get into seeing my cardiologist for her to reduce uh, my medication, but I'm having a hard time getting in to see my primary care doctor for the referral because I need a referral when you use insurance, you need referrals to see the specialist. So um, it's, it's taken a, a really long time and stuff, but I, I'm still in a lot of pain. Um, and I just, you know, just wanted to like, I guess, add that to my prayer list. And I apologize, it's so long. Um, but yeah, I'm just going through that right now. Okay. Well, we are going to pray for you and God is going to send a breakthrough. So let's pray for Jan and Jesse's niece. Do you have a name for your niece, Jesse? Uh, Brother Aradhya Waliva. Oh, wow. Aradhya. Aradhya. Aradhya Valiva. Remember the Aradhya means adorable or worship or something like that. Worship. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. So let's pray. Anybody is led to pray for these two requests? I don't have to pray all the time. Everybody prays, you know. <laughs> Lori, you're so quiet. What's happening? <laughs> Who wants to pray? Teddy? I, I can pray for them. Please. Heather, thank you. Father, we thank you so much for um, your care for us and that you love us and that you uh, provide everything that we need. Jesus, we thank you that you will willfully give up your will to do the Father's will to sacrifice and that you took our stripes and your body was beaten so that ours could be whole. And so we just appropriate um, the blood of Jesus right now in Jan and her heart that she has complete healing there lord and that yeah. as she's able to move forward that she will have the knowledge of the pain being reduced and that her bones will no longer be holy as with holes in them but wholly yours as set apart and that they will be firm and that they will be sound and that the calcium will be redeposited back into their into her bones lord and that the ailment that is there in her heart is healed completely and that lord you give her wisdom mm -hmm. in what she needs to do in her lifestyle that will keep this healing whole in her body and then she will not return there 
Amen. And Lord, yeah. we uh, pray before you, Jesse's niece. I can't say the name, but you know the name, Lord. And Lord, we just pray over her liver. Lord, the liver is a place of detox. And so we just pray that she has complete detox and wholeness there, or that she doesn't need that transplant, that you give her that transplant from the, the organ room of heaven and bring that organ into earth, Lord, and let her be a testimony and a miracle. Lord, let her skin be a sign that she's being healed and let her eyes be the sign that she's being healed, that she no longer needs that liver, Lord, and that the light of your life and the light of who you are brings that healing, Lord, we just cause all of that to be whole in her, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just also pray for her her parents, that they will have testimony and give glory. We thank you for Jesse and he will give glory to you, but also Lord, for wisdom in this family so that they can continue in health and wholeness throughout her entire life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Man, we seal that miracle in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for breakthroughs, miraculous testimonies in Jesus' name, for your glory. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. This message will be posted on YouTube. I would encourage you to watch it. And also the link will be posted on the Ecclesia group. And if you're new, please leave your phone number. I know it is late now, but <laughs> I think everybody was here, was being here before. Thank you, everyone. Can't wait for next week. So God bless you. Have a very fruitful, wonderful, blessed, glorious week. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Apostle. And everyone, bye. 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 Amen.